Hi, I'm Deanna Jo and welcome to my channel, Responsible Faith. Occasionally I get messages from UPCers hoping to appear on this channel to debate me or correct me um, or to present a more balanced view of the organization uh, because they view my videos as being kind of one-sided and kind of negative. And I guess I can understand that. Um, some have been rude <laughs> and aggressive and others have been very polite and you know I'm in the unique situation where I've had random men on the internet, UPC men, uh, even ministers, <laughs> um, ask for my phone number so they can call me up and explain the UPC doctrine to me because you know they're convinced that I never fully understood it. The rude messages I just ignore, I don't bother responding to them. The one I want to share with you today, it was polite and respectful. And so I actually sat down and took the time to give him a long, well thought out response. Uh, and I decided to share it with you, minus any identifying details to this minister. Because I feel that my response to him really makes clear my position on hosting UPCI ministers and defenders. And I wanted to make this video for future reference for anyone who might contact me in the future. So this was his uh, email he sent me. He says, Hey Deanna, I hope you're having a great summer. My name is, he gives his full name, and I am the pastor of, and he gives the name of his church in the name of his city and state. It was an American pastor. I am also an ordained minister with the United Pentecostal Church International. I am curious if you would be interested in doing an interview with me for your YouTube channel. I don't have a desire to debate or even defend, but I thought I could present a balanced view of the organization. I appreciate you giving voices to a variety of people. Anyway, no pressure either way. I realize that might not fit into the purpose of this channel. I just thought I would float it out there. Thanks. And then he signs off his name and leaves his phone number in case I wanted to contact him. So I responded and I addressed it by his first name and I said, Your offer is not the first I've received from a UPC minister or saint, but I appreciate your gracious approach. I sincerely hope you won't be offended by my honest response. I tend to be fairly direct. I generally do not trust UPC ministers, except a few locals that I know and respect. And while I'm pretty sure they view me as a backslider, if I ever hosted someone, it would likely be one of them. I feel I do have a fairly balanced view of the organization, having been UPCI for 25 years, attending six different UPC churches, sitting under eight different UPC pastors. My ex-husband evangelized for a short time and we were youth pastors, and we also served as interim pastors at a small local church while they were looking for a pastor. My parents attended a United Pentecostal Church Bible College, as did I for a short time, and they held leadership positions in UPC churches. I also have ordained UPC ministers and missionaries in my family, lest you think that I'm simply applying my one bad experience with one pastor in one church to the entire UPC organization, which would be very irresponsible. Setting any doctrinal differences aside, <laughs> I understand the range of views and environments within UPC culture, which I often acknowledge in my videos, and that not all UPC churches fit within the more strict, confrontational, controlling mindset. I also know how loyal UPC ministers are to the organization and to one another. Not only is nothing being done about abuse of harsh pastors and the damage they cause, but a lot of you are complicit by fellowshipping with them, hosting them for events, and not welcoming their wounded saints to seek refuge in your churches without first obtaining a letter of transfer. Imagine going to your abuser to get permission to leave. I view these mindsets as part of the bigger problem. There is a level of pastor worship, idolatry, 
within your organization that is unhealthy, ungodly, and is promoted from the top down. In my opinion, this dynamic creates a perfect environment for spiritual abuse to thrive. Unquestioned. Blind obedience to authority is toxic and dangerous. You do have kind ministers as well, but typically the silence from those ministers in the face of situations of spiritual abuse and transgressions from other pastors is deafening. I don't see how you could present this systemic UPC problem in a more balanced way. Obviously, the UPC is not the only organization with issues. But, in my opinion, they possess a unique set of qualities that make them co quite conducive to abuse. As the organization I grew up in, I have a special place in my heart for their victims, having been one myself. And therefore, they do feature a bit more prominently on my channel. To be fair, you don't exactly have a balanced picture of your organization either. Unless you've left, you can't fully understand how the UPC operates and treats people. Leaving is a unique experience as shared on my channel. It would be difficult for you to understand reaching a point where you cannot in good conscience agree with what is taught and finding yourself faced with the prospect of leaving your entire community behind. That takes a lot of courage. Those who leave are called backsliders, compromisers, rebellious, but in reality, many had too much integrity to remain part of something they couldn't agree with anymore. Some women who change the way they look upon leaving feel that their UPC look was not only unbiblical and unnecessary, but a source of pride and even a potential stumbling block to the gospel for unbelievers. These scenarios are aspects of balance that I think it would be difficult for you to understand. The truth is, people who have left likely have the most balanced view of the UPC of anyone because they've seen it from every angle, especially those who were involved in ministry in some way. You were right to assume that hosting a UPC minister to present his opinion of the organization wouldn't fit within the purpose of this channel. This channel is not about the UPC, even though they do feature heavily because of my background. I created this channel to encourage people to study scripture for themselves within context and not simply build their beliefs on what they've been told by pastors, parents, friends, even me. The name Responsible Faith was chosen to represent people taking personal responsibility for their faith. I do share things I've studied as a jumping off point to challenge ideas they may have been taught, but even then, I don't necessarily expect people to think exactly like me. My videos are, as I stated, simply a jumping off point for personal study. I have respect for others' personal convictions. The secondary purpose of my channel is to define and confront spiritual abuse, which I suppose does sound rather negative when presented. It's a heavy subject to deal with on a regular basis. Many people have been deeply wounded by pastors and churches, and, ab and the abuse stories I share are directed at them. I host people from various religious backgrounds, not just UPC. Victims have felt comforted in knowing they're not alone and will make it through their pain and anxiety. Of course, my goal is for them to hold on to Jesus as they come through, but some just cannot. And I funnel those who reach out to me into healthy private support groups for victims of spiritual abuse, and I recommend resources to help them as they heal. If you've not read the book, The Subtle Power of Spiritual Abuse by Jeff Van Vonderen and David Johnson, I can't recommend it enough. It was written by two pastors, and it's an excellent resource. I know you were hoping to bring some balance to the way the UPC is portrayed on my channel, and I can understand that. My view is that there are a host of extremely positive UPC social media, YouTube, and podcast options available, including David K. Bernard's. And I honestly think that my channel has brought some balance to that narrative. Your perception is that I am presenting an extreme version of the UPCI as the only credible view. But many would argue that the UPC presents an extreme version of Christianity as the only credible view. 
If I could respectfully put the ball back in your court, in the spirit of observing balance, as a Christian pastor, have you ever invited a Trinitarian minister to your church to present the Trinity so your church can have a balanced view of how the Godhead is viewed within the Christian community? Have you ever presented the eschatological idea of partial preterism? So your members could have a more balanced presentation of various end time views to make up their own mind. Have you ever presented the annihilationist view when preaching about hell or just conscious eternal torment? True UPC heritage has ministers in it who were annihilationists or as the older generation called it, burnt up root and branch. Ever invited a Baptist pastor to speak so your congregation can interact with other Christian pastors who represent Christianity a little bit differently than you do? Would you ever allow me to come and stand in your pulpit to present a broader view of something that you shared? Have you attempted to bring a balanced view to your church of the UPC organization itself? I mean, the apostolic heritage I hear many modern UPC pastors speak of is carefully crafted, omitting key parts. And in some cases, it's reworked to the point that it's pure fantasy. There are various issues and flaws in the organization that rarely get mentioned. One being a major lack of awareness amongst UPCers of the sheer volume of sexual abuse and spiritual abuse cases you have. And I know this sounds blunt, but I've never previously known the UPC to be concerned with balance. I would guess, whether you realize it or not, deep down, your hope really was to defend and not to bring balance. I'm not criticizing you for this. I can certainly understand why you would feel that way. All I can offer you is this. If you want to show a more balanced version of the UPC on my channel, show up kindly and honestly in the comment section. Love the people who disagree with you. Agree to disagree politely. Respond compassionately to people who share stories of abuse instead of jumping immediately into a defensive posture. Pray for the victims who've shared their stories in the videos and in the comment section. Empathize with them. My comment section is a war zone sometimes and the nastiest people tend to be the UPC and apostolics. It could use a few more kind UPCers, especially ministers, who appear to love Jesus and people more than the United Pentecostal Church organization itself. You could set that example. You could also show up in David Bernard's Facebook comments and rebuke some of the nasty UPC commenters who attack others who are just respectfully commenting with a different view. That would be the best way you could model a better view of the UPC. And it would be a breath of fresh air for so many of us who have left your organization. At times, I've wondered if the UPC even understands the concept of the fruit of the Spirit. I know some do, but I don't ever remember hearing it preached when I was in. And as an outflow of the Holy Spirit, it's a useful one. One that doesn't make waitresses cry in the back of restaurants on Sunday nights after church lets out and the UPCers order and reorder their food. The UPC has a lot of work to do before they start correcting non-UPC YouTube channels and social media comments. And I certainly don't say that as though I'm never in need of correction or as if I don't constantly need to be doing what I can to allow the Holy Spirit to work in my life and improve me as well, making me a better example of Jesus and his love. Again, I hope this didn't come across too harshly, but I wanted to be honest in my explanation as to why your polite offer wasn't accepted and the reason that people have the stories they do and the feelings they do about the UPC. I'm sorry my response was so lengthy. You probably got the cumulative response to all the offers that have been piling up from UPCers over the last three years. Lucky you, haha. -ha. I do appreciate your time if you've made it this far. Blessings to you, your sister in Christ, Deanna Jo. I got to admit, <laughs> I often roll out that your sister in Christ when I respond to UPCers is kind of like bait. I'm just, I would just love to see one of them return it, right? Acknowledge that I am their sister in Christ, but not one of them has ever reciprocated that sentiment to me. And um, 
it's it's a pretty good example of how exclusive they are most would not consider me a fellow believer in Christ and uh, along that mindset a funny story when if you've watched my channel uh, my my story the first one where I was 17 and I went through spiritual abuse and we had to leave our church to go to another UPC church that was a little more lenient but it was the only other one in our area and so <laughs> Shortly after we left, my dad and a friend of his were out driving, and this vehicle in front of them had some sheets of plywood on the back of it. It was a truck, and they blew off. And so my dad and his friend stopped, because, I mean, it's a rural area, everybody helps everybody, and so they stopped to help them put the plywood back on their truck. Lo and behold, out of the truck <laughs> comes our previous pastor from the church we had just left and a pastor friend of his. And I mean, it was probably a little bit awkward, but dad and his friend helped them. Well, dad and his friend probably loaded them all, but because um, the, the pastor was a bit older and stuff. But anyway, <laughs> when they were getting ready to leave, he's like, looks at uh, dad and his friend. And instead of saying, thank you, brother Joe, because this pastor was like brother and sister everything like to the point where it was annoying it was brother Joe sister Lorena everything was brother and sister everything he said and so when when they're getting ready to leave he says thank you sirs like they had left to go to another UPC church but he just couldn't bring himself to call them brother brother Joe and to call his his friend who also went to the, this UPC church brother so you know they rescind that brother and sister fast um but anyway that's <laughs> unrelated in a way but to the minister who sent me this email you know he he did respond to me and we back and forth a little bit after that and you know he was very kind and he spoke of some views that he and i actually agree on and you know his hope for change in the UPC organization and even some of the issues that he holds some different views on that have not maybe gone over so well with his fellow ministers um, I think he's kind of hoping to affect some change from within he seems optimistic <laughs> I'm not very optimistic but uh, yeah, I don't expect to see any real marked change in the UPC because you know, the people that can bring the change um, have a vested interest in keeping things the way they are but you know I hope he's right I hope I hope there is some change at some point but I do know how hard it is to be a UPC -er with differences of opinion or questions or even maybe considering leaving um, you have to be very careful who you confide in it's a very stressful thought process and situation to be in and so I just want to say, if you're UPC and you want to reach out to me, I am a safe place to vent, to share, to ask questions. I'm not against you. I do care about you. And, you know, I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't. A lot of times this isn't very fun. <laughs> Uh, you know, and I have heard from various UPC saints and pastors and pastors' wives, youth pastors, over the last three years since I started this channel. And, you know, some have since left, some have stayed. Again, some are hoping to affect change from within. And they've shared frustrations with me, as well as their own abuse stories, usually at the hand of other pastors. And I just want you to know, if you're one of those people, I have kept you in my prayers. I'm honored by your trust, and I do guard your stories very carefully. And I hope I've proven my trustworthiness to you. And, you know, I feel like ministers and their families are especially isolated in these instances. And I just want you to know that I'm here. But I want to be clear. <laughs> I'm not interested in hosting a UPC perspective on this channel. I would not feel comfortable promoting that. I don't agree with them doctrinally on several points, nor do I think they're a healthy, safe group as a whole. And I think I've been clear about that on this channel. Most responsible faith viewers are ex-UPC or uh, have left groups similar in style or belief. and 
they already know all about you. We, we don't need to present your side of things here. Like I said in my email response, you know, they've, they've seen your churches and they've seen them from all sides, including the leaving side and then from the outside. And I can assure you that brings out the true character and attitudes of UPC saints and ministers. If you want to see the fruit, that's the fruit of the tree. When everyone's agreeing with you and everything's going your way, that's not the real fruit. The fruit, the fruit comes out when you have disagreement, when there's conflict. And so I would say that my viewers and myself probably have the broader view of the organization and the actual fruit it's producing more so than current UPCers would. So anyway, thanks for watching. That's my position on hosting UPCers to present a different view of the UPC than what you would normally hear on my channel. And so if you like this video, you can hit the like button and share it. If you'd like for YouTube to let you know when I post a new one, you can hit subscribe and the little notification bell and they will do that. So I hope you have a great day.